rot is one of those problems that every gardener has run across into their garden. Blossom bin rot can actually affect several different types of plants. We'll see it on watermelons, but probably the primary source that we see it is on those pesky tomato plants. And when we see blossom bin rot, typically what we see on the outside is at the very butt end of the tomato, we start seeing a brown sunken in area and that will continue to grow, but about the same size as the diameter of the tomato. Over time, it will start looking fuzzy and that's because it allows other secondary pathogens to move in there and they start to eat at the decaying tissue at that point in time. Besides that version, we also have a second version of blossom in rot that we see in tomatoes and it's an internal, uh, internal blossom in rot. And with internal blossom in rot, the tomato fruit actually looks perfectly normal on the outside. You're not seeing a bump or a black spot at the butt end of that tomato fruit. It's so when you cut it open and toward that bottom end of that tomato, you'll see this dark brown lesion on the inside. It can be anything from about, oh, about a dime in diameter up to a quarter in diameter. Now the big question that we have, okay, we have tomatoes with blossom in rot, whether it's the external version that we typically see or we have the internal blossom in rot. What can we do with the tomatoes? And the nice thing to know is the tomatoes are still edible to you. All you need to do is cut out that black area, black to brown area, and you can continue to eat your tomatoes. It doesn't affect the flavor, it doesn't affect canning ability of those tomatoes or anything at that point in time. So they're completely usable. Now the next question is, what can we do to control it or prevent it from occurring? There's a lot of different theories around blossom in rot. What's actually causing it? There's evidence to say that it's a calcium deficiencies. There's evidence that maybe it's a watering issue, but whatever it really is, it's more of an environmental issue. And there isn't a lot that we can do for it. We know that we have some tomato varieties that are a lot more susceptible to it. So typically what we recommend is, if you have a problem this year with that tomato variety, just don't select it next year. Try a different variety. That may get you away from the problem. Can we add calcium to the soil to help with that possible calcium deficiency? And the answer is no. Typically we have enough calcium present in the soil, the plants just aren't up taking them as, up as much as we actually need available for the plants. So adding more calcium isn't gonna help you. The other big key with it is just make sure you do constant maintain watering throughout the growing season. Everything is showing that if you do a constant watering schedule, even with a more susceptible variety to blossom in rot, typically you're not seeing as much. So you wanna make sure you're watering it consistently through the summer, especially when we get into those drier days, or turning off that hose when we get that nice uh, summer rain in July and August. But the other advantage is by having a good watering schedule is you're also gonna prevent your possibility of cracking of your tomatoes. And that's where you're gonna get those lesions on the top, on the capsule on the top part of that tomato fruit. So that's your best thing. If you do watering, property, uh, proper variety selection, typically you should be able to deter any blossom in rot. If you run into it, just cut it out and continue eating those tomatoes from your garden.